Hi guys, so today we're going to be disabling the lockout chip on a Nintendo Entertainment System, the original front loading version. And for that, it's a fairly simple mod to do. Basically, all we have to do is the way the lockout chip works in the system is um, pin 4 on it. If it's set to ground, then it's acting as what's known as a key. If it's set to positive 5 volts, then it's acting as what's known as a lock. So, basically what we're going to do, inside the console here, pin 4 is set to positive 5 volts. And inside your cartridge here, it's set to ground. Just go straight to ground. And that this acts as the key, this is the lock. So basically all we have to do is desolder the lockout chip and bend up pin 4 and then send that straight to ground. So then technically, or well basically, what we're going to be doing is turning this into the key. So it's always unlocked. Now it won't work with every game from a different region. It's depending on the... if it's 60 hertz or 50 hertz. It really depends. Sometimes it'll just lock up the system, but the majority of games will work fine. So what you're going to need to, need to do the mod is you're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver, some solder, a thin piece of heat shrink, just a small piece, about an inch long. You're also going to need a bit of wire, not too thick, not too thin. Some wire cutters and strippers, just a pair of pliers will do. A desoldering plunger thingy. Better if you have a desoldering gun, but they're expensive. And just various little things. You might need a little flathead screwdriver or something. And a soldering iron. Okay, so first up, we're going to take apart the console. Now, if you don't know how to do this, then you probably won't want to mod it because it's fairly easy you just take out these screws here they're just Phillips heads and what I'll do is I'll get this all apart and then I'll show you what we have to do next okay now that we've got the top half off we just need to get down to the board level so we're gonna have to take out all these little screws here and basically just strip it down to the board now I'm not gonna show you how to do this it's fairly straightforward so I'll just get into that and we'll be back okay so here's the board out I've removed the cartridge connector, the zip socket. Now what you're going to want to look for is you're going to want to look for what's called the CIC. It's printed there on the board and here's the IC we need to take out. Now, we need to remove pin 4 which is on this side so we go 1, 2, 3, 4. This one right here. Now that should be connected to 5 volts, which we can see this little trace here does definitely look like one. If you want to be sure, you can just check it with a multimeter. Just power on the console and check it. Now, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to flip the board over. We're going to need to find it here. So there it is there. Sorry if that's not in focus. So here's the IC here. I'll just double check that. Yep, there it is. Now, we're going to need to heat up this entire area here with the soldering iron and then just suck up all the solder. You may need to put new fresh solder on here first so it'll grip in and suck it all out. So what I've done just to make it a bit easier for you to see is I've just got a sharpie and just coloured each side of the chip here. Now what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to heat up all these here. One, two, three, four, five, six, whatever, how many there are. Now, the easiest way to do that is there's actually a few different ways you can do this. You can do it by hand with an iron here and clean up each pin at a time, which is probably the easiest way. And it puts the least amount of thermal stress on the IC, on the component. The other way is you can use a hot air gun and heat up the entire area at once and just pull the entire chip out from the, from the bottom. That's another way you can do it. Um, I recommend 
doing it first with the iron, especially on these finer points here, which don't have a have uh, uh, which aren't connected to giant ground plantains. And then if it's stuck, you can use hot air to clean it up. The other option is it's the best option to do because these are all through hole components here. Is you can actually get a desoldering gun. I haven't got one because they're a bit expensive. You can get cheap ones. Um, and basically, it's it's like a soldering iron, but the tip, the tip here is hollow, and you stick it over it, and you turn on the pump, and it sucks up all the solder as you go. That's probably the quickest way to do it. Um, but if you're just doing this one off, I don't recommend buying one because it, you'll only use it once. If this is all you want to do, so easiest way for a beginner is just get your solder. We're just going to heat up each pad. I'm going to go around and do all of them first. Um, if you can hear that funny breeze noise, I've just got a fan going at the moment to blow away any of the smoke. So it's not very good to breathe in because I'm using leaded solder here and the solder on this board, I'm not sure if it's lead free. But anyway, any, any fumes aren't good to breathe in. So what we're doing here is it's just known as reflowing. We're reflowing the solder, making it nice and fresh again. Now some of these points are going to be harder than others to pull up because they will be connected to large planes, like a ground plane or a large 5 volt plane. So what you can do is you can just grab, grab one point here, heat it up for a few seconds, and then suck it out like that. Now it's a bit messy because this... Um, this plunger is a bit old, it's a bit worn out, it needs to be replaced. And you go after it, suck it up. See how that one didn't get all of it out? So that's when you come back. So I'm going to probably need to use hot air on this one as well. This is good because it, even though I'm going to be use hotting it, using hot air anyway on this one, um, the most solder you can get rid of is the better. The more solder you can get rid of is the better. It just means there's less to heat up later with hot air and again be putting less stress on the component. Suck that one up. Now he's, uh, looks like a 5 volt, I think. Oh wait, no it's not. Now this one here looks like it's a ground plane. Generally your ground planes are fairly big. So it's going to take a bit more heat to suck it up. Kind of fine. Just leave that to cool down again for a second. Flip the board over and just check it. You can see here some of the hasn't sucked all the solder out of the points here. So we are going to need to come back and do it with some hot air. So with that, we're going to need to use a bit of flux this time. The solder we added had flux in it, but because we stuck most of it off, it's not there anymore. There we go. Now I'm just going to turn on my hot air station, get it nice and toasty and while that's heating up. I can actually, uh, I don't know where I've put my um, the game bit, I've only got the big game bit here so I can't show you. That's right. Basically you got another, like I said before, there's another lockout chip inside this cartridge here. It's set to ground, so it's a key. This one's a lock. So what we're basically going to do is 
make this one the key so it unlocks the system so basically you're just using the system to unlock itself so you can use um, bootleg carts and stuff if you want you can use unlicensed games this is a licensed one it also helps if your 72 pin ZIF connector here if it's a bit bad or if the one you got in the system isn't very good um, it can help with that as well um, it'll make some games so boot up a lot easier because it's not looking for that copy protection there. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is before I do that, I'm just going to look, flip over the board here. I'm just going to bend these components back a slight smidge just so they don't get knocked around too much. And I'll flip this board over again. And what I'm going to do, get my hot air. Bring that back into the frame, sorry. And I'm just going to go over this with hot air. Probably can't see that, but the flux is getting nice and toasty. With some of these larger um, traces here, they take a bit more heat to heat up. If these smaller ones along the along the top here or your bottom um, are probably already molten, but it's just these points along here that I need to warm up a bit more. You could you could come along with your um, the pump here and suck them up as well if you want. That'll work too. As you can see, it's falling out now. That's nice and hot. And you can just grab your tweezers. If you're holding the board up in the air, you can sort of just Pull the components straight out. Let's check there, it's not quite out yet. Let's have a look. Nice and quick here. Just a little bit crooked, that's why. Now we're just going to let that chip cool down first for a little bit. And while we've still got our hot air and everything here, and heat these points up again and try and clean them out. We clean that blocks and stuff off there. Okay, so I'm just going to go back and just clean up this area here again, just clean out all that um, bit of flux and stuff that's floating around there with some rubbing alcohol. Here the bottle go. Here it is. Isopropyl. Just let the board cool down a bit first, spray some on there. I'm going to get my handy dandy brush, nylon brush. If you use a wire brush, it'll make a mess. So the board's still pretty warm, so that's going to evaporate fairly quick. So now we've got our lockout chip removed. I'm going to sit there for a little while. And I've just cleaned out all those holes here now, so they're nice and clean. See straight through. Now what we need to do is locate pin 4 on the IC. And see how it goes now. 
Another easy way to do it, I forgot to mention before, is to mark on the board where the where the chip goes. Well here you can see it because on the board here they've on the silk screen they've printed out the orientation of the chip. So you've got your um, little notch here which lines up with this little dot here that indicates pin one. So that's pin one there. One, two, three, four. As you can see, the trace comes back, up, around, goes to another pin here, and back into there, through that wire there. So we're just going to put this out of the way for a second. So pin four from the little dot. I'm going to be doing this my way up, so pop that down there. Now pin four from the first pin here, so one, two, three, four. So it's that pin there. Two, three, four. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna very gently with a pair of tweezers or what have you. Grab that one up there by the base of it and bend up like that. bench. See, like that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to grab our piece of wire by, see where I put it, there it is. I'm going to strip off a tiny bit of the end of it, like this. We cut it again because this is an old piece that was just lying around the shop. Like that. Now we're going to twist it up. I'm just going to use my little helping hand doodad. So this is probably all out of focus at the moment because, yeah, and grab my solder. I'm just going to tin this wire. Nice and neat. And I'm going to trim it back as far as I can. Not too far though. Oh. It's probably the right length, just a tiny little smidge. And here I'm just going to give it a flux. On that point there. Probably just bend it a bit more of a right angle there. More flux. Make sure it's going to stick well. Now Flip this chip upside down is probably the easiest way. Now I'm going to come along. Solder that one in. I'll probably just put a dab on there. Oops. Come off. There we go. Sold it in. Now I'm gonna leave this as long as possible just for now. And I'm gonna grab my small heat shrink tubing and I will just trim it down. And I find where I put my scissors. Trim it down. Uh, heat shrink tubing obviously will shrink when you heat it up. So probably five mils, depending how long you cut your wire and everything, and just make sure it's nice and squared off at the end there. And that's pretty self-explanatory. We're going to slide this down the open end of the wire. Being very gentle, because this chip is pretty fragile. And then just going to push it on there. I'm going to grab my hot air again. And this is a bit tricky. You want to cover as much of that leg as possible, so I'm just going to push it up with my finger. Move my fingers out of the way so I don't burn them. There we 
go. Nice and sealed off. So now what we're going to do is you're going to pop this chip back into the board the correct way around. So where's the hole on? There it is. So pin one. So this will go in like that. And this wire here will just go out. We're going to connect this wire up to ground. So it's pretty easy to find a ground point like all along here. That's all ground there. Um, yeah, pretty easy. So I'm going to pop this chip back in and I'll be back in a second. And there you go. It's all soldered in all nice and neat now. And now, it is now region free. So, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Hope you found it useful. Um, if you want a tutorial on something else, how to mod something else, um, just leave a comment and I'll see if I can do one up for you. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.